Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we have some romance books that have a caretaking scene in them. This is one of my favorite things to read in a romance book is a caretaking scene when one of the people in the couple is sick or injured and the other one has to take care of them. It is so stinking cute. I've already made this recommendation video before so I'll link the first one down below for you but these are even more recommendations. So let's get started. I love these books so much. I love caretaking in romances. First, I actually have a monster romance. We have No Getting Ogre You by ML Eliza. So this one's very interesting. We have our heroine who's a human woman. She goes hiking up in some mountains and she ends up falling through this cavern in the mountains and she gets knocked out. This ogre lives in the mountains underground and he sees her, he finds her, saves her, brings her back to his nest, takes care of her and helps her when she's injured, like nurses her back to health when she gets knocked out and um, she wakes up. She's obviously a little scared because it's an ogre, but he's just so sweet to her and she falls for him and it's so cute. There's a language barrier in here, which is one of my other favorite tropes too. This one is just so cute and so sweet. If you love monster romances and you haven't read this one yet, please do. Next, I have Barbarians Touched by Ruby Dixon. This is book number seven, a part of the Ice Planet Barbarian series. This one is between Rokan and Lila. Lila here and her sister Maddie are one of the later groupings of human women who have crash landed on the planet. A few of the human women who are already on Not Hoth find their spaceship and wake them up from cryo sleep. And one of the alien men sees Lila, thinks she is very attractive and kidnaps her to spark resonance, the mating bond essentially. And it doesn't work out. Rokan, the other men who went on the mission to save these women, decides to go save Lila from his tribesmen. And then once they see each other after she gets her cooey, the symbiote in her body that helps her live on the planet, there is resonance, okay? And so it is so cute. There's caretaking in here from both ends. Like Rokan takes care of Lila when she's first kidnapped, like when he rescues her from the kidnapping. And then Lila, I think, take care, takes care of Rokan. He gets injured in some way. And so she has to help take care of him. Lila in here is also deaf. So there's that amazing representation in here. She used to have her cochlear implant, but when she was abducted, the aliens took that away. Um, the bad aliens, not the IPB aliens. Um, so she's trying to navigate this new world being deaf and not being able to hear. I love this one. It's one of my favorites in the IPB series. Next time in bed with a Highlander by Maya Banks, the first book in the McCabe trilogy. So our heroine in here is very coveted. And I think like Highland Scottish society because she is the inheritor to this large land, you know? Um, and so she gets kidnapped by some evil guy and he wants to force her to marry him so he can get this land. And so while they're traveling and she's kidnapped, you know, like she's there against her will, um, this boy comes across their group of people and the evil guy ends up taking him too. And so this little boy and this woman end up coming together to find an escape plan. They run away. This boy is like, we need to find my father's key. My father will protect you and reward you for saving me. We gotta get back to my home. And so that's exactly what they do. His dad ends up realizing who this woman is and oh, how important she is. And he's like, okay, well, you're gonna marry me instead. <laughs> And he's like, I'm very grateful that you saved my son, but in order to save you from this evil guy, you gotta marry me. At first he does it for very selfish reasons, but then he slowly starts to fall in love with her, obviously. At the beginning of this book, she is not looking too hot because she's been beaten so badly by the man who originally kidnapped her. And so the hero helps take care of her at the beginning, but then she ends up caring for the hero because he gets injured in some way in the book too. And that scene is very pivotal in the book in my mind. The second book in the series, Seduction of a Highland Lass, also has caretaking in it as well. So the guy from book one was actually like betrothed to this woman from a different clan to make an alliance. And he ended up finding somebody else, you know, from book one. And so Alaric in here, his brother, has decided to take his place. And so he goes to the land to set up this agreement. But on his way, he ends up getting attacked. And his horse, he like is stuck on his horse, passed on his horse. And his horse ends up stopping at this cabin in the middle of nowhere in the Scottish Highlands. And our heroine in here lives in said cabin. Her name is Keely and she has been ostracized from the clan that he was on his way to. And she is a healer and she sees him and decides to take care of him and heal him in her cabin. He thinks that she is an angel and he is besotted with her the entire time. He's so attracted and is like eternally grateful for Keely and what she did for him and taking care of him and nursing him back to health. But he's also falling in love with her throughout 
her taking care of him. It is so good. I love this one. Next, I have So Huts Protection by A.G. Wild. This is an alien romance that I really enjoyed a couple months ago. Cleo in here is a human woman who has been abducted from Earth by some evil aliens and put on this planet. Um, and she's in transport on this kind of car, essentially automobile. And then her cage she's in ends up falling off the truck and into this jungle and she escapes. And she's been living in this jungle for about a year, escaping the men who kidnapped her. So these evil men end up hiring Sohut to find and track down this animal in the woods. When it's actually Cleo, she's not an animal. Um, and so he's trying to find this elusive off-world animal in this jungle. And when he realizes it's actually a sentient like person with thoughts and feelings and isn't an animal, he is shocked um, and the two of them kind of get together to try and overrun these men who hired so huts and the two of them fall in love in the jungle it's a survival romance i love alien survival romances so much so chloe is very hesitant about so hut when she first meets him because the whole beginning of the book she's running away from him hiding from him because she thinks he's an evil alien out to get her but then when he sees her he's like oh i'm not gonna kill you what are you talking about like you're a person <laughs> and then at one point she kind of like tricks him to where he gets injured and then she feels guilty and ends up taking care of him and helping him when he's hurt that scene is very good. I love that scene in the book. Next, I have Seduce Me at Sunrise by Lisa Kleypas, the second book in the Hathaway series. This one's about Mary Penn and Wynne. This is like a mutual pining childhood crush to more romance. So Wynne was kind of like adopted into the Hathaway family as a child. And ever since then, he has been in love with Wynne. And Wynne has been in love with Mary Penn for so long as well. But Mary Penn doesn't think he's good enough for Wynne and Wynne she just wants him she and it takes her him the whole book to realize that when ended up getting scarlet fever i'm pretty sure when she was um in her i want to say teen years and it affected her health later on in life she's very sickly very weak um and mary penn helps take care of her for a lot of the book in the beginning at least and in the previous book in the series too and then she goes off to help better her health at this clinic and it's years later after she's been at this clinic for a little bit mary penn is finding it really hard to stay away from uh, Wynn. And then also in the book, I think Mary Penn gets sick at one point and Wynn takes care of him to show him how she can take care of him too. Um, this one was so sweet. It's one of my favorites in the Hathaway series. I just love mutual pining romances. It's so cute. Speaking of the Hathaways, I have Tempt Me at Twilight, which is the next book in the series, book three. So this romance is between Poppy Hathaway, one of the Hathaway sisters, and Harry Rutledge. And so Poppy and her family are currently staying at his hotel that he owns. And then one day Poppy and Harry actually meet in person and he cannot stop thinking about her. It's so cute. But Poppy claims that she's gonna marry another man, that she's in love with another man, and Harry tries his hardest to get Poppy to be his. And he might lie and scheme to make that so. The caretaking scene in here is like the heroine twists her ankle and the hero helps take care of her and kind of like sweeps her off her feet, picks her up, and carries her around. It's so cute. Next, I have Savage Lover by Sophie Lark, book three in the Brutal Birthright series. This is the romance between Camille and Nero. So these two were actually in high school together. They went to the same high school, but they weren't necessarily friends, and they aren't friends afterward. The two of them end up running into each other one day in their late 20s, I want to say. And ever since they run into each other, they can't stop thinking about each other. Nero is uh, the son to a mob boss and Camille is the daughter to a mechanic. And so she works in her father's mechanic shop a lot. And so the two of them really bond over their love of cars and mechanics and all that jazz. The caretaking scene in this book was very pivotal, I feel like, for their relationship. Um, something happens to Nero and he gets kind of injured and bloodied and bruised and he goes to Camille's house and she helps kind of stitch him stitch him back up. Um, I feel like that scene was very pivotal in the book. It helped these two reconnect in a way that they didn't in high school. Next I have Heartless Duke by uh, Scarlett Scott, the second book in the League of Duke series. This caretaking scene in this book is one of my favorites I've ever read. It is so good. I really recommend reading book one before this one book two because Bridget the heroine in here is actually kind of like the villain of book one like you learn about her and why she did what she did when you read this book so please read book one before you get to this one something happens in book one to where Bridget is in trouble from what happened the hero from book one his brother ends up kidnapping Bridget to seek retribution for what she did and to try and kind of like get her to confess everything that she's done and who she's working for and all this stuff. And so he's kidnapped her and she's a captive in his house and all the staff know and everything like that. 
and the two of them fall in love <laughs> while she is his captive. The caretaking scene in here was so good because Bridget in here has been captive for quite a long time in this house and the hero, I think he gets sick or injured. I can't remember, honestly. Um, he gets sick, I think. He gets sick and she nurses him back to health and cares for him and takes care of him and won't leave his bedside, even though he kidnapped her. It just showed him how much she cares for him. And she's not simply here because he's taken her. She's here because she cares about him. And it was so cute. I loved, loved, loved that part of the book. And lastly, I have Big Beast by Cassie Mint, one of her big boy novellas. So this is the romance between Matthew and Chloe. Matthew is this very big and renowned chef in this very popular restaurant. And Chloe is one of his servers. He's always thought she's very cute, um, but hasn't thought anything of it. Um, but then Chloe ends up accidentally spilling some food on this guy's lap, a very renowned critic, I wanna say, I think. Um, and Matthew is not happy about it. Finds out that she's actually sick and that's what happened to her. She wasn't trying to sabotage anything with the critic or anything, she was just sick. But he only realizes that after he fires Chloe in front of everyone. And so he goes to her apartment to check up on her and to kind of apologize for what happened, how things went down. And then when he gets there, Chloe's still not feeling well. She has a really bad vertigo that day and she really needs money to pay rent. And so she had to go to work. She could not take a day off. And so he goes to her house to apologize and take care of her and bring her things to help her feel better. I thought this one was really cute and really sweet after he apologized the beginning when he was like yelling at her in front of everybody. It was not my favorite thing ever, but I feel like he makes up for it and grovels when he comes over to her house. It's really cute. There you have it. Those are 10 romance books that have a wonderful caretaking scene in them. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me any flower emoji of your choice down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day Wake up Today's gonna be a good day